Hey, Hi how's there. the Rock Church doing tonight? Hi, guys. Um, I know that um, we're doing warfare prayer on Wednesdays, so I know I have some, actually some men, even before then, were praying during this hour. I've asked them to, so I know they won't be watching until a little bit later, um, until probably after um, the live is on. But um, I want to thank all the ones of the Rock Church are praying the warfare prayer and um, fasting. Thank you so much. It does make a difference. Your prayers are very vital um, to the kingdom of God. Yes. And it's good to see Pastor Narvice um, in Oregon Hello. joining us. And Sandra and Pastor Evans is joining us. I'm sure I'm, I'm not going to be able to get all of you in there here in a minute. But um, I know it's Wednesday night again, and my wife and I are very excited about always being able to um, have these Bible studies. And so um, I thank her for uh, taking care of it last week for me, and um, but I'm with her tonight. Um, before we get started, just a reminder, pen and paper is a good idea for notes. Um, take down scriptures and all that stuff and and be a part of that. So it's good to see Angel, Angel. Um, will come on. Sean, it's good to see you come on too. Yes. Um, also, um, just quick little advertisement. We don't make any money off of this, so, but I'm doing it because I enjoy these Bibles. This is the King James Version of the Apostolic um, um, Study Bible. I love it. I love it. Uh, Pentecostal Publishing House. You can look at it online. You can order it. It is probably about a hundred dollars, and maybe a little bit more um, with shipping and handling. It's going to be a little bit more than that, but it is uh, worth worth the cost. Um, it's thick. It's big. And this one here is what we give when new converts come in or new people come in. Um, we just had one um, young man get the Holy uh, get baptized. I'm sorry, baptized last Sunday, and um, a 20 some year old man, and then we had a 40 some year old man get it the Sunday before. And when we give them their, their certificates, a baptismal or Holy Ghost certificate, we give them one of these Bibles. It's called, um, well, it's a Holy Bible, King James Version. It's got a lot of good study in there. Get a Pentecostal publishing house. Uh, I believe it's called the Word of Flame Bible, and um, it is under, I believe, under $10. I think it's around $7, maybe even a little under that, but it is a wonderful Bible. I still use this Bible, too, so I just want to let you see that. And then this is the Bible I'm going to be using tonight. Of course, I've got a bunch. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure I've got over 100 and some Bibles, but... Um, this is the Bible I'm going to be using tonight. I, I love this Bible also. It's got a great, great study. As a matter of fact, the study we're doing um, through this on um, on Wednesday nights, um, exploring the Word of God, is actually is a part of this. And so um, it's called um, Exploring God's Word, and I believe that's under $30. Um, I, I don't think it's under 25, but I think it's under 30 and I'm, I'm thinking about $27. But again, uh, I showed you three good Bibles from very expensive to uh, very costly and they're all, all of them. Um, of course, some of them have a lot more, but even the one under $10 has a lot of great studies in it. Um, Bible studies and be able to go into and and look in and see the truths of God. I mean, it talks about healing, holiness, talks about faith, it talks about baptism, salvation, it talks about the pot. I mean, it just, it goes on and on and, and about Jesus' um, natural life and everything like that. So it's a, it's a great study for all that. Now this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And what a better place to be is than be in a Pentecostal church on Pentecost Sunday um, because um, we actually believe the apostles, uh, what they um, have um, right. uh, preached, and that's what we try to preach, exactly what the Word of God is. And so um, our own evangelist um, out of our church, uh, evangelist Reverend Brian Barber will be preaching 
to our church um, on site at 10 a.m. Now we are going to be streaming it, so you'll be able to see it if you're not living in the area. Now, if you're a member of the Rock Church, or if you're in the area, I would ask you to please be there. Uh, we're making all the precautions. We actually have N95 face mask, or I guess face mask is not the right word, um, to hand out if you were of that you if you would want. So we have plenty of those also. But I am glad to see you. Shireen, hi, Shireen. And hi, Shireen. It's good to see you. Hopefully you got your Bible and your Holy Ghost certificate. Um, she's one of the ones that just got the Bible I was just talking about. And she got a Holy Ghost certificate. She got the Holy Ghost at Arby's parking lot. Yes, um, so awesome. About three weeks ago. So we're, we love you and we're anxious. to. We ain't even got to see you in church yet. Right. Because she works on Sunday mornings. And um, we're going to be baptizing her soon in, in the name of Jesus Christ. So thank you for being online and, and being with us. Again, uh, I'd give a little advertisement. One of the reasons is get people coming, getting people online and everything. It's good to see Rosa from North Carolina. And Lisa. Um, Lisa. Lisa. And um, Shirley is on now. Yeah. So, wow. I'm, yeah, we're getting a yeah. here. They're coming up yeah, now. She's saying thank you for the Bible <laughs> and the certificate. Amen, amen. It's good to see all of you. We got the church, church the Rock Church in um, North Carolina, um, the one in Beaverton, Oregon, um, of course, Clute, Lake Jackson, and Richwood. We're all signed in now, and, and I'm glad to see all of you with us. Uh, I believe I did tell you about Brother Barber. Yeah. yeah. So be there if you can. Um, if you haven't, and if you're in the area, if you hadn't come visit yet, again, we're doing all the precautionaries that needs to be done, and we offer in even the N95 mask, and we're spacing people out. So we're more uh, more than capable of being able to help uh, where you're able to come and be a part of the worship. If you're not able to, um, it is going to be live. And then, uh, as I mentioned about our YouTube, we do have a YouTube channel. It's called TRC, one word, TRC Family subscribe to it we'd love to have you be a part of it and um, you'll get to see these bible studies and all of our online stuff so well um, uh, yeah i guess we ought to pray huh? <laughs> um, with my beautiful wife and um, i'm going to have her lead us in prayer if you pray with me lord we thank you, you for this day and thank you for your presence it's just been so beautiful upon our lives today dear jesus we ask that you would go with us and lord let your word be illuminated before us father we ask that you would confirm your word in the name of jesus tonight Lord, Thank that it will minister Jesus. to every heart, every spirit, God. Lord, we lose rest and peace, dear Jesus, upon those that have labored hard today. Lord, that they'll be able to focus tonight, dear Jesus, upon your word. And Lord, that they'll feel it, Lord. Refresh their bodies, refresh their spirits, Lord. And more than anything, refresh their souls, God, we pray in your mighty name. Lord, that you would lead them, guide them, direct them through this, Lord. We lose revelation, understanding, God. And we ask for you to have your perfect will and way. Thank in you, Jesus. Jesus' name, in Jesus Amen. Name. Before we get started, I also want to um, 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 see Angel was by the church earlier this evening, but um, I wanted to mention we uh, actually got two texts and a phone call. Um, just be in prayer for um, a couple of our families. Um, God's um, they need direction and, and everything, so God's hand will be upon them. Yes. And um, so when you're thinking about praying tonight, just say, Lord, you know the need. Um, we're, we're seeking for you. Special and spoken. Amen. All right, last week, uh, we'll just get right into the lesson here. Last week, we, we learned a lot about the Tower of Babel, the, what happened with the sons of Noah. Uh, we also learned um, uh, about the promise that was given to Abraham, uh, about Lot's, um, the, the separation there that came between Abraham and his nephew Lot and where Lot went and what happened there with Sodom and Gomorrah. And I really believe the Holy Ghost spoke to our hearts last week, um, probably, and I, I pray that it continued on even after that night, the Lord dealing with us so that we make sure that we're ready. Um, so tonight we're gonna pick up where we left off and it's Isaac's the promised son. If you'll turn with me to Genesis 21, in whatever version you're reading there, I'll be from the King James, um, Genesis 21. 
and uh, give me a thumbs up so I know you're there. You got it. You turn to it. So I, I will give you a few minutes. I don't want to rush on without you. So let's see. Okay, we should be ready. All right, Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God always keeps his promises. Let me just say that. God makes a promise. He is, is not man that he should lie, the Bible says. He always keeps his promises. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age and at the set time in which God had spoken to him. And let me add here. You're never too old to do something for God. Right. There's right. no age limit on what God can use. Um, I, I, if you still got breath in your body, you're able for the Lord to do something wonderful in your life. Yeah, so yeah. don't let the enemy fill your mind. Well, I can't do this and I can't do that. That is not true. Age has uh, no holds no weight in the kingdom of God. Never affected God. That's for never sure. Never affected. Very good word. Um, Verse 3, And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. How many of you, you can send a little heart out there that you've been waiting on a promise from God? Now, I hope it don't take a hundred years <laughs> for God to do that. But, but God made a promise, and Abraham was a hundred. It goes back to that age there, that God, uh, age is not a criteria of the promises coming to pass. All right, so here is the promised son. Finally, what, what was promised to him, he now sees. But here's the thing. I want you to turn to Genesis 22 and 2. So God gives a promise, right? And then watch what he does with Abraham. And it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. The word there, tempt, it means tested and proved. God was going to test and prove Abraham. And Abraham had said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Isn't this something? God give you a promise, and then he's telling you to go and to take that promise and to offer it on an offering of sacrifice. And so he says, verse 3, we're going to go on, make sure, uh, uh, 3 through 5. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go up yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, Abraham is known as a father of faith, but I want you to look at this verse, verse 5. Here he told his servants... I'm going to take the lad and I are going to go up, okay, yonder and worship. But he spoke it with his mouth, faith, and come again to you. He told them, but we're coming back. Right. So I don't know what went through his head when the Lord told him to do it, but he did not let it come out of his mouth if there was any doubt or fear there. He spoke with his mouth, but we will come back again. This is one thing that I really felt in the Holy Ghost to kind of hit home tonight. Don't let your mouth cause you to doubt and right. spring words of doubt. Speak it with faith. You know your God means good for you. What's uh, Jeremiah 29, 11? You know that he's wanting you to have a good end and not a bad end. You know that he's wanting to do things. So let's not believe the lies of the enemy that says that he's killing our promise. He's taken away these things. No, I may not have seen it yesterday. I may not have seen it five minutes ago, but I will I see will. what the Lord has promised. Amen. Amen. How many can say amen? Thumbs up. Amen. Amen. Did you want to add anything on that? No, you're okay. Doing you're doing good. All right. She's on a roll. <laughs> Holy Ghost is rolling through her. <laughs> okay. So we're going to look at um, verse uh, 7. Okay. Where are we at now? Uh, chapter 22, 22, verse 7. Thank on you. Genesis? Genesis. Okay. Yeah, still. You're right. 
And it says, and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Now there are different um, uh, scholars that say that Isaac was different ages. Some say that he was a little boy. Some say that he was a teenager. Some say that he was actually a grown man. Can you imagine you're going up there and you know because you've been around sacrificing, you've been around offerings unto the Lord. And then here, you're, you're, he's looking around. He sees the wood and the fire, but he's, where's the lamb? And then in verse 8 says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Here is a prophetic word that God filled the mouth of Abraham with prophesying that Jesus was going to come and be the lamb for the burnt offering. He was going to give of himself, provide himself for a lamb. So he was speaking, not only telling Isaac that the Lord was going to provide a, a some uh, sacrifice in his stead, but he was saying it prophetically that through the years, and now we get to glean from that. Right, right. right. So they went both of them together, verse 9, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son. Can you imagine what was going through Isaac's mind? Your father is bounding you up, okay? And it says, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. You, you know, it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say that Isaac grumbled or, yeah. or, uh, gave complaints i don't i don't know that it was there but can you imagine the weight of well, that my thought is and and i know i'm interrupted but my no. thought is is that doesn't matter if he was preteen, teenage right. young adult or full-grown man they're gonna they're gonna fight or fuss yes. but because of abraham's training and teaching yes right Letting him know when he said God will supply this sacrifice, even though his dad was binding him and laying him in the altar, he trusted what his father said about God, not because that's what he was telling him, but he's watched his dad walk by faith all that time. Right. You don't think it's important for your children to know who Jesus is at a young age. Yes. You're mistakenly wrong. It's, it's gonna, you're going to pay a dear, dear price for that someday because when they rebel, that a lot of times shows that they haven't seen us as parents walk by faith. I'm very, very fortunate as a father. Uh, my son has been through a lot of things, horrendous things. Um, unfortunately, some of it might have been his own um, cause but there's some of it was not at all but he is still living for god not just living for god but he's also um, fulfilling the calling that god has given him he could have easily walked away but not a pat on my wife's back or no, my back but we did show by an example that we walk by faith and he's seen us go through horrendous things in our lives and we never got our eyes off of Jesus Christ. We didn't get our eyes on the man or the people or a church that seems like it might have been doing us wrong, but we had our eyes upon him. I, I, I know I'm overemphasizing this, but if you are not, actually I'm not overemphasizing this, but if you're not letting your children know that God should be first from the very youngest age that possible yeah. you're you're doing an injustice to your children because their god is the only one that's going to be able to save their soul and if they don't think god is a priority in their life or somebody that's important in their life um something else is more important uh right. you know you fill in the blank if there's something else but there are so many things that people um trust more in God than, than in God that they um, lose their children later. Yeah. I have no other trust than Jesus Christ. Right. I have no other trust than who he is. 
I, I, I was telling him today in, in my preparing for my warfare prayer, Lord, I am not capable. I have no abilities. I do not know how to do this except for what I have been taught and what I have learned from your word. And therefore, I'm going to pursue what you want me to pursue. Right. And in the name of Jesus right. Christ. Do I do it wrong at times? I guarantee you I do. But by his grace and his mercy, he, he, he shows me a better way. So I, I'm, I'm not overemphasizing, even though it sounds like I am. If we do, we, we hurt our children by not putting God first in our lives first mm -hmm. and living by faith. If not, Abraham, if Abraham would have done that, I guarantee, I don't care if he was 10 years old or seven years old, mm -hmm. and especially as he got older, if he was a young, um, young adult, that he would have had a fight for his life right. to be able to buy. But his son willingly allowed him to do it mm -hmm. because he believed what his daddy told him. Isn't that amazing? And, and God's not looking for perfection out no. of parents. There's not a perfect parent. There never will be a perfect parent. Ask my son. Yeah. I'm not perfect. You're not going to do things right all the time. But he, but to have that focus where, where the Lord is your focus, he's, he's, he's the, the one that you cast your eyes on. That's what makes the difference. What you set your eyes on most of the time is what your children's going to set their eyes on. They're going to see that importance. So that was really good. Thank you. Um, also, You're very good too. <laughs> I wanted to bring up something, a typology. When he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. That's a typology of us laying our will, sacrificing our will for the will of the Father. And we're supposed to be about his business. We're supposed to be concerned about the things that he's concerned with, like Jesus was. Jesus even said that. So it's a typology of us laying our will down and saying, Father, you you use me. You do with me as you will. I'm yours. You, Amen. Bought, you bought me with the price. Right. So, Verse 10. You see me doing something down here. I'm trying to keep up with you all out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to, if, if there's somebody saying something, I'm trying to respond. So if I don't get to you or I don't put a thumbs up because you, you said something, I'm sorry, I'll get to it later. Yeah. All right, so let's look at verse 10. It says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. The Lord is not a child killer. He was never intending no. on taking Isaac's life, but he needed to test Abraham. We've got to understand he that. He wanted to know if Abraham loved the promise more right. than the promise giver. Right, exactly. Think about that. You might right. get your promise that God promised you and if you fall in love with that more than him, yes, you're in, I mean, it's not a good thing. Yes, and I know I'm talking to a bunch of people that want him more than the promise. Yes, I, I'm thankful for the promise. I'm thankful for what he's given us with the promise, but he he's weighs more, much more in value than that. I thank the Lord for that. So he was testing him, and we all go through tests that the Lord needs to see because we don't know our heart until we go through a test. How many of you did not know something was in you or you did not, you would have responded a certain way until you went through something? Wasn't pleasant. It's not pleasant to find it out, but we got to know um, because we don't know our own hearts. Right, right. So. Our Lord, the Bible talk, says our heart is wicked. How, and we, we sometimes will sit and judge other people's hearts. We don't even know what our own heart is. No. So that's why we're not supposed to judge one another. We're not supposed to judge somebody else's heart. We're just supposed to examine and ask God to, to work on ours. Right. If we, if we spent more focus on that, we wouldn't have time for the other, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, then verse 13, it says, Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So... That was basically the story of Abraham and the Lord uh, uh, providing a sacrifice for that, which is we all know that yeah. it's prophetic. So 
Now we're going to go to what Jacob and Esau, right? Right. The chosen nation. Yeah. I, I put that on our title, the chosen nation, because I know that's what we're getting ready to go into, and that's what we've been talking, what she talked about last week, also. Yes. Um, and it's ironic, and and I know she's going to go probably a little bit more in depth with it, but uh, Esau sells his birthright. Yes. All right. Now we jumped ahead. So um, where we have Isaac that has takes a wife, and he marries a wife named Rebecca, and you'll be able to read this. You know, hey Joe, Joe from Hi, Youngstown. Joe. Good to see you. Hey, one um, of our saints from Youngstown. Where? Love you, man. It's good to have you. So he takes a wife. She has two sons, Jacob and Esau, and they had a history from the very beginning. And if you get a chance, read all through that. We're gonna actually skip to Genesis 25, verse 30. <laughs> Yeah, um, 30 through 34. Right. Again, if you don't have your pen and paper, of course, you can always go back, but it's good to have that. Yes. Now, in those days, the firstborn would receive what they call a birthright, and that means they would they would get a huge part of what was the father's. If and not all of it. Not all of it. So here we have Isaac. His eyes were felony, um, and he was just about ready to die. And so it was time for him to bless the firstborn with his birthright. Well, if you read before all of this, Esau and um, Jacob had this tension between them anyway. Esau was a man. He was a hunter. And uh, uh, Jacob... He was a rough man. Right. He was a rough man. Uh, they really... Uh, you could tell they weren't twins. I don't believe they looked anything alike. Um, they definitely didn't act like brothers they were just they're total two different people one was a mama's boy yes honestly and the other one was a daddy's boy right Esau was daddy's choice and uh, Jacob was mama's choice and so let's let's read to Genesis 25 we're gonna start at verse 30 and it says and Esau said to Jacob feed me I pray thee with that same red pottage that for I am faint therefore was his name called Edom now this was actually this was before Isaac was was uh, about to pass away. This was when Esau had been out uh, uh, hunting all day, and so he was famished, and Jacob had been making some pottage there, which I believe is like a red beans yeah. type of thing. And his brother's eaten it before, and is one, one of his favorites, actually. I, I mean, as you read it, you can tell. And he says, he tells them, Esau came to him, he says, for I am faint, therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, well, sell me this day thy birthright. So, it's almost as if Jacob had this whole thing planned so that he could get from him because you know, what was when they were born, he was actually, Jacob was actually holding on to the heel of Esau. In other words, he was... He was uh, wanting to come out first. Yes, he was, he, there was always this competition kind of thing that was taking place. Well, and, and I, I, I truly don't believe Esau was thinking that he was going to hold him to those. Right, that makes you wonder that, yes. Because, he, oh yeah, yeah, you can have my birthright. Okay, go ahead. I'm hungry now. Without even thinking, sometimes we gotta be very, very careful what we say and what we do because we don't know what the consequences is it's gonna be later. Yes. Never sell the truths of God. Right. Never let back up, never let, don't, don't ever give up, don't ever, um, you know, somebody says, well, you could believe it this way. N no, that's not Bible. We, we need to make sure that everything that people are teaching us or telling us or explaining it to us, it's out of the word of God. I, sorry, I'm going to be just real straight. I don't care what your opinion is. Your opinion will cause me to go to hell. I want the truth so I can go to heaven. Yes. And what my opinion is, will send you to hell. You want to know what the truth is so you can make it to heaven. So I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about myself too. So God bless you. Right. Did we, so many times we'll sell out for something that's lesser because at that moment- it Makes us feel good. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it fills our belly. Right, right. fills our belly. Yeah. Exactly. Our quote unquote hunger. But there is nothing more valuable than your salvation. There is absolutely nothing more valuable of whether you make it to heaven or not. And that's, that's, that's how you need to take that seriously. So you'll say, hey, this, this means everything to me. Don't sell what you have. It's a great price. It's a wonderful, valuable, most valuable thing that you'll ever have. You know, and I know we're, 
I always, I always jump at different times, but she's going to get us back on cue. But you know, people say salvation is free. Absolutely. God literally allowed them to persecute, allowed him, them to, um, to k kill him on the cross. Yes. They, he allowed it to happen. He allowed all that. That was all free for us to be able to repent of our sins so we'll be able to be um, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. But I want to tell you something. It cost you everything you have yes. to make heaven your home because that's just the initial. Why in the world would he give us his all if he didn't expect us to give our all back to him? Right. Just think about that. All right, um, we'll go on. And if you're going to sell out, sell out to him. Oh, yeah. So My Lord. Not, not for whatever the enemy can promise. Some, some sports channel or yes. some some false religion or some right. feel good church. No, no, no. God will have you make, yeah. he'll, he'll have you feel good. He'll be feeling good for eternity. Right. <laughs> See, we think because we're living in this world that this is all that there is. You know, we've oh. got to enjoy things that is. But you've got to understand, this is preparing us for the world to come. That's going to be eternity. That's going to be where all the time is going to be spent. So yeah. here is just preparing us for that. Yeah. And so don't don't waste all your, don't okay. sell out to stuff here. That's just, you know. Uh, you could live to be 100 years old, but that is nothing compared no. to a, eternity. No. Right. So true. Okay, so um, Esau said this, Behold, I'm at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? He felt he was fixing to die, and hey, I need, I, what am I going to care about this birthright? It's not going to yeah. help me live. Yeah. Well, if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm not going to live another day, the birthright is not, not going to do me no good anyhow. Exactly. Verse 33, And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore to him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, rose up, went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, mm. which the word there says scorned his birthright as beneath his notice. Wow. So, all right, then we go to... I could to, say a whole lot more, but I'm not. We got to get through this. Right. <laughs> The other thing the father would do is he would bless, he would give a blessing at yeah. the time of his passing. So here we already know that. Hands he, on blessings. Yes, hands on blessings. So Esau had already lost his birthright. So here we're going to learn where Jacob steals the blessing. So Because his daddy wasn't going to give it to Jacob. No. For him, that, that was not a contract to him. Yes. His son sold his birthright. He did not sell the, the rights of his birthright. Right. I hope you understand that. Jesus never sells his gospel for anybody. He didn't sell it to sell it in short. His birthright that you receive is for sure an amen. We're the only one that can sell that birthright. Right. Wow, think about that. That's a good, Pastor Smith. Good, oh, Pastor. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh. All right, now this one, next one has a lot of reading, so just bear with me, but I don't want to pass through it quickly because, uh, you know, it's important. It's, it's important. All right, so Genesis 27, we're going to start at verse 1. And then, do you want to read? You want me to read? No, please read. Okay. You read a whole lot better than I do. <laughs> okay. All right, and the it church came, says amen. <laughs> and it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son. And said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me and take me some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may die, and that my soul may bless thee before I die. So here comes the blessing. He's preparing Esau for the blessing. Right. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Of course, we know in those days that could have taken a while. You know, it could have been a day, could have been, you know, a few days. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory. Hold on, let me turn my page. Make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, now remember, she favored Jacob. Right. Obey my voice according to that which I commanded thee. 
Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man. I am a smooth man. My father preadventure will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Now what's funny is says, I will seem to him as a deceiver, which it says cheat or an imposter, but that's exactly what he was doing. Right. He was, was trying to deceive. Um, He's conning his own dad. Right. And his mother said unto him, upon, upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me then. And he went and fetched, brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son, Esau, which was there, so that he would smell like Esau. So he put Esau's clothes on him so he would have the smell, were her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands. So she put goats... Uh, fur on him so he would feel hairy. Okay, I'm thinking that's pretty deceptive. Yeah. And upon the smooth of his neck, because he knew back in those days they would grab their neck, yeah. you know, and kiss them and bless them. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which he, she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? Hmm. And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Okay, first of all, this is a little funny here. You had to bring the Lord into that deception. It's just yeah. <laughs> so, so many times. So many times do we, hopefully we never do that. We don't bring the Lord into our deception. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Because you understand, he wasn't deaf. He was just blind. He couldn't see. Yeah, so, he, he knew someone wasn't just right. Right. He probably, the sound of his voice. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hand, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, and my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come now, near now, and kiss me, my son. And he went near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, God, give him thee of the day dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. You can see as he starts blessing him why Jacob wanted this blessing. Yeah. Okay. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. It Be wasn't just about the money. No. Or his possessions. But it was about the things that were promised to his dad, his grandfather. Yes. Through the years, throughout the time, that's what he wanted. Yes. And, of course, we know over the years of time that the Lord used this um, so that the lineage would go how the Lord wanted it for, for Jesus Christ, Jesus. the birth of Jesus. Right. Right. It says, Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his honey. And he also had made a savory meat and brought it unto his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless him. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Wow. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtility and have taken away thy blessing. Mm. 
and he he said is not the right name Jacob for he has supplanted me these two times he took away my birthright and behold now he has taken away my blessing and he said hast thou not reserved a blessing for me and Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do now unto thee, my son? So it goes on, it says in verse 38 that Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Can you imagine that the Lord would, you, would that your blessing would be taken, that it would be given to another, your brother, instead of you when you were born? So here, the reality's hitting him. He's lost his birthright and he's lost his blessing. And then he's fixing to lose his father. Right, right. Brother Baldwin and, and Naomi came on. Hi, guys. We were reading. Okay. So it's good to see you all again. Good to have right. y'all. Yeah. All right. So when the what happened is when we realized that Esau's mad now. He is really wroth against Jacob, and so Rebecca knows this. So she says she tells Jacob, "I want you to flee to where uh, my brother Laban uh, lives, and you can go live with him and his family um, there." So because he is out to kill you, he has purposed in his heart. That he wants to to take your life. Also, Nancy's gone. Nancy's son's come on too. Hi, Nancy. I'm Good sorry. I, I'm trying to catch up with all. Of, of course, Levada's on there. She's always on there. Yeah, <laughs> she's very faithful. Yeah. That's good. Uh, let's see. So, uh, we're going to talk about Jacob's encounter with God. Uh, Genesis 28. Let's go to that. Genesis 20, 10 through 15. 28, 10 through 15. Now, this is an experience. Now, you got to know Jacob is on the run now. He's he's leaving his brother Esau to make sure because he, he surely, Esau was so mad, he surely would have killed him. Yeah. Well, at least that's what he th thought he was going to happen to him, that right. um, he would end up killing him. So, hey, it's good to see Don Kramer on uh, Hi, Don. Friends from oh, Ohio. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Love your daddy. Yes, we do. Love y'all very much. Y'all been so good to us. Miss you. Um, all right, so we're going to look at verse 11. And it says, And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. Of course, I know, I know um, we're kind of jumping a lot because there's so much in here. Yes. But you you got to realize Jacob, because he was a deceiver, mm -hmm. Jacob paid the price for being deceptive from his father-in-law. He ended up having to marry um, the, the oldest sister. Yeah, we're and we're getting her, to that. Yeah, I, I know I'm jumping. In, but okay. <laughs> I, I, I still want to jump a little bit. Mm. But there, there's a whole lot of... doesn't matter what we do. We do reap what we sow. Yes. And so, um, you called of God, if we do it the wrong way, we will reap what we sowed. Um, but thank God again, we live in a time of mercy and grace. It doesn't give us license to sin, doesn't give us license to uh, do things wrongly, but when we do make a mistake or we do have a problem, the mercy and grace of God is sufficient for you and I. I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Oh no, you're good. We've noticed that there's flaws in Jacob's character, some big oh, flaws. Yeah, big flaws. And so the Lord and wants to do things through Jacob because it's been promised. Yeah. And so he, his lineage, his birth, right, Jesus Christ, right. The, the, I mean, it's it's ironic. It, it proves that you and I, we do have a chance to be used of God. Yes. We're not perfect, but we do have a heart after Him. Right. But the Lord, sometimes he's got to work on us. And we're going to see that here in the next few chapters. So he's laying down. He's going to sleep for the night. He has a dream. And he dreamed about this ladder that was reaching heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou livest. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. So here comes the promise to Jacob. Here's the Lord speaking to him, his, what he's going to do in his life. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The same promise that he spoke to Abraham, he was now, and to Isaac, he was now passing on to Jacob. 
He says, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou goest and will bring them again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee, to thee of. Now, let me just say this. We are the, remember from last week, we're the spiritual lineage right. okay, of Abraham's seed. So what he's speaking here, if we have given our life over to the Lord, we can believe that these things are for us as well. Right, amen. And so he wakes up out of his sleep. He said, surely the Lord is in this place. I knew it not. And he was afraid and he, uh, the, the dreadful afraid, not so much. It was more of a reverence fear that was there. And so he um, tells about that he named the place uh, there. He built that altar um, there, poured oil on top of it. And he dedicated that place to the Lord. And the part that I want to bring up with this part is everybody should have a Jesus encounter. Yeah. There should be something. And if you've had that, give a thumbs up, give a heart or something that says, you know what? I have had that type of encounter. Amen. I have met, somehow met Jesus. I know we don't see him face to face, but you have had that touch from him. You've had that experience with him. You've had that moment with him. If you've not had it yet, I pray that this will put a desire and hunger in your yes. heart to want that. Yes. He is so wanting to fellowship with you. He's so wanting to share his plans oh, with he's you. He's so much in love with you. Exactly. He wants to he wants to be that to you and give you that experience like Jacob had that night where he was speaking to him. So he loves you more than life itself. Dad's on. Hey, my dad's dad on. Dad says he's got us. That's All good. All right, hey, right, Dad. <laughs> Ninety-one years old. Yay. He's got a new phone, so he's on. Yeah, he's a... love you. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Um, so, all right, so then, where are we at? That was on verse 10. Okay, so Jacob remembers the house of the Lord. All right, and then we go, uh, we're going to go ahead. Now, they we're skipping a lot on this part because he a gets lot. married. He yeah. goes where he was. This is what my husband was talking about. He was, um, Laban had promised him that he could have Rachel because he fell in love with Rachel at first sight. And we're just touching things. Right. We're going from Genesis to Revelation. I mean, realistically, how... How long would that take? Right, that would take years. Take years, yeah. but we're trying to do it just within weeks. Yes. But we're trying to give you the the ammunition, the the scriptures, yeah. So that just don't trust what we're saying. No, read. I mean, obviously, we're reading right out of the Word of God. Right. But for you to get into it yourself and cross reference, go go mm -hmm. to the scriptures and find out what's what's being said uh, different. And that's where we're going to tie the Old Testament into the New Testament. Yes. And so that you'll see the plan of salvation in even a greater way, but also what um, there is after salvation. Yeah. It's just not about salvation, but it's life after. Oh, yeah. Um, before we even go to heaven. I right. mean, the walk that we walk, God said he's going to give us life more abundantly. And I'm going to tell you, I have more life more abundantly now yes. than what I would have if I would have followed my ways. Absolutely. And I'm so thankful for that. Right, I'm so so I'm with him on that. Um, so he worked seven years thinking he's going to get Rachel. He got deceived and woke up and oh, that, found what out a revelation. it was not Rachel. <laughs> it was Leah. Oh God, I'd hate to think I got his uh, her sister. <laughs> Love you, Cheryl, but yeah. no, not, not that way. <laughs> so then, next thing you know, he works another seven years to get Rachel. Of course, then we go through where Leah was having all the kids and Rachel was having none yeah. of the children. Wow. So what drama in this man's life. Yeah. Could you imagine, yeah. man? But how many of you, God has given you a promise, but you feel like you've just been through so much stuff, right? You're like, oh my goodness, when is the promise coming? Because yeah. it's not seeming too promisey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good word. Promisey, right. It's probably a new one. But I don't even know if it's in the English language, but uh, it is now. It is now. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what we, brings us to Genesis 32. I know we skipped ahead, so just work with us here. Genesis 32. Dad, if you didn't notice, Brent says hi. Yeah. So, and Brent's <laughs> probably less technology than Dad is. I'm just saying, Brent, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Love you. Let's see. At least I think he's on there. He met some little text came through. Now he so might, I don't know. he <laughs> might be doing the, um, the, the YouTube. Yeah. Because he, because oh. he doesn't have Facebook, so he's on maybe. YouTube. Okay, that so, maybe you'll see this TRC later. TRC family. Yeah. YouTube. All right. So turn to verse twenty-four. 
verse 24. And, and that's it, Genesis? Yes. What chapter? Genesis 32, 32. verse 24. All right, good. Now here, um, Jacob had left his family um, so that they could be somewhere safe. He sent them on because he was he was going to meet Esau. Came He found out Esau was coming to meet him. Now, if you got to remember, they left. It wasn't good terms when they left no, before. No. And he knew, I really believed, he was sensing that it wasn't going to be good terms this time either because I, Jake, Esau had vowed he was going to kill uh, Jacob. So here we go, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Let me just say this. How many of you have ever faced a circumstance that was really rough and really tough, and you went into prayer, wrestling in prayer? Yes. You needed an answer from God. You needed to know, because that's where Jacob was. If God was not going to be with him, then it's very possible that Esau was going to take his life. So if you've ever been in that place, where you've had to wrestle before with the Lord, that you need an answer. And, and, and so this is where Jacob was. In verse 26, he said, let me go for the day breaketh. Now this is the angel of the Lord speaking. Yeah. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless no, me. I refuse. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a battle. It's a fight. That's what we're doing. You know, TRC, I, I, I'm going to speak to you just for a second. Right. Wednesday is a, uh, a warfare day for us in prayer. And um, warfare is, is different. And um, when you go into battle, you might come out not wounded or whatever, right. but you still come out tired. Yes. You'll come out um, a little battered. You'll come out uh, with your t clothes dirty. So warfare um, battles a little bit different than um, just even kingdom praying um, or even refreshing or just enjoying the presence of God. So he realized he was in a warfare right there. Mm -hmm. yes. He was in warfare, not just for, of, of, of the fear of his brother, but he was in warfare for the future of the nation of Israel. Yes. Truly. So. So true. And I'm glad he didn't let him go until he blessed no, him. He had to get blessed yes. before he was called to be called Israel. So here, here he says in verse 27, and he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Here it is. So he said, I'm, I'm supplanter. I'm a deceiver. I'm a deceiver. Okay. And then he said in verse 28, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. In other words, you are no more a deceiver. No. And let me say this. I'm going to speak this into your mind. Whatever the devil is trying to tell oh, you that Jesus you are. Name. You have gotten a hold of Jesus Christ. You can declare, I am not that person anymore. I used to be this, yes. but I am not this now. And we have that uh, ability to do in God. And I'm so grateful for that. In Jesus' name. And he said, but no, it shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with man and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask about my name? And he blessed him there. And so he knew, he had that experience, right. another encounter with the Lord right. that he had that he can go and say, God is with me. Right. God is with me. The Bible says to make your calling and election sure. Yeah. I'm hoping every day. You are positioning yourself in God so that He can, you can make sure that your calling and election is sure in the Lord, and let Him let Him touch you and bless you and strengthen you and help you in every way that that He can. That the Lord can do that. Yes, and and that's a wonderful thing about living for the Lord, is that it can you can actually experience that every day. Yes, you can know that you're safe in the arms of God. So true. And then we hear when we read in the story that he met Esau and they um, uh, greeted each other, hugged, and that kind of thing. It was so, such a much different encounter than what Jacob had expected. And it would not have happened had Jacob not have gone and wrestled in that prayer meeting that he had. We call it a come to Jesus meeting sometimes. Yeah. when you got yeah. <laughs> kind of need yeah. that a little bit there. Yeah. And um, you're right, um, Sister Sister Honey, you, you, you are not what um, they say you are. You're a child of God now. Yes. 
Amen, amen. So true. That's right. So Never true. forget that. Nope. Never Let, forget that. Let the enemy hear you say it. Too. Yeah. He puts it in your head. Yeah. I am a child of God. Yes. So amen. true. Amen. All right. So um, getting to the, the last part of this Bible lesson is we're going to talk about Joseph. So Joseph was one of the brothers. Now, keep in mind, Leah had... Um, uh, two of them. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 10 <laughs> kids. And then uh, there was two more that, um, oh, help me out, uh, exactly. Rachel had. Right. I'm <laughs> trying to spit it out here. Yeah. And so there was, uh, there was grievance between the two families um, in, because and here. All those boys. Oh, mercy. Right. Here Jacob loved Rachel's too. Now, I know he loved his other boys too, yeah. but he was he showed partiality. Well, he he had he was partial to the to the woman. Right, right, yeah. and that was the love of his life, right? Yeah. And so he had made a coat um, and everything for Joseph. Um, he just kind of catered to him, and the brothers had jealousy between them. They yeah. didn't like it, and then here, of course, Joseph. Uh, starts having these dreams that you know the sun and the moon and stars are going to bow down and you know in other words he's telling them that one day I'm going to rule over y'all. Yeah. Well, that don't well, go so you, well in the family. Tell, tell your big brothers that. <laughs> right, right. Some days I'm going to be more. I'm going to be yeah, more known you're than you. To me. Yeah. So you know, probably didn't use much wisdom no. in it. <laughs> At that particular time, you know, go and share in that. But he was, I believe, he was probably excited about the dream. Yeah, he just figured his brothers would be excited too. Yes. No, they didn't think that way. And I'm just going to tell you, God gives you a dream sometimes. Be careful who you share it with because right. not everybody's going to understand. Right. Share it with people that, that you know that can celebrate and rejoice with you over that. Share, um, share so. it with your God, um, godly leaders. Yes. Um, you you yes. know, sometimes your mentors... Um, um, uh, I guess that's a, a good word. Mentors are ones that's supposed to be celebrated. Now, your peers at times might not celebrate, even yes. though they might know God and they might be seem like they're in the same path you are. Um, they just might get a little bit jealous, um, but um, just be careful. Um, right. And don't allow, when that happens, to steal your dreams. Exactly. Look what happened. I mean, we're going to get ready to see what happened. And he did not, he did not allow any of that to steal his dream and right. God performed miracle. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Amen. Amen. So verse 23 in chapter 37. Here we go. Um, Joseph had gone out. It said it came to pass. Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him, cast him into a pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. I could spend so there's so much revelation in these few verses here, but uh, let me let me just read through verse 28. And they sat down to eat bread. They lifted their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, and going into carrying it down to Egypt. And now you gotta understand, God had a plan, and He needed Joseph in Egypt because that was His plan. And there was no other way to get him there. No. And Joseph and Judah said unto his brothers, What proof profit if it is we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Because they were talking about killing him because they, they really did not like him. Yeah, okay? that's, that's a lot of frustration there. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brother was content. Then there passed by the Midianites' merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph and to Egypt. Okay. I don't want to interrupt you, but Sister Elliot's on. Oh, hey. Her father was one of the greatest pastors yes. the Rock Church ever had. I want to thank you for that. Yes. Um, we're benefiting. We're benefiting from um, Brother Stevens and Sister Stevens, and thank God for you. Absolutely. God bless you. We honor you. I think about it, and I pray um, a lot for your family. God bless you. Yes. So, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, that was good. I'm glad you did. Thank you good for being to have her. Yes, thank you. So here he was sold, and then now you're talking about being deceived. The the J Jacob is deceived himself again. The man gets bad news. Okay, yep. he gets so he the the sons go back and they take the coat and they dip it in blood and they tear it up and you know, put, put shreds in it and they take it back to the dad and he said he said that hey he must and then let the dad come to his own assumptions. Okay, 
Um, so when we look at verse, let's see, chapter 37, 29 through uh, 36, I will spare some of this, but I wanted to read, look down to verse 32. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, this have we found. Know not whether it be thy son's coat or no. They lied to him. They knew it was a son's coat, okay? So I'm gonna tell you, you may get lied to, you may be deceived, but remember, God's purpose in your life is greater. Right. My brother just put on there, I will never understand the love that whom that... Um, I'm, it's hard for me to read from the that love far he off. shows me, I am not worthy of his love and kindness that he has given me. No, none of us are. Yes, so true. But thank God, yes. amen, Right. for his mercy and his grace. And thank God that we had a mom and dad that prayed for us. Yes. God bless my brother. Amen. My, my real brother. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. In verse 33, and he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt, rent in pieces. Now here's Jacob. Jacob is already in his mind that this is what's happened to his son. Yeah. Joseph is gone. The brothers didn't have to do anything. That's how the devil works. Yeah. All he's got to do is plant just a little something, something. Yeah, a little fear. A little fear, a little something. Next thing you know, our mind has run into the far dark side, yeah. right? So we've got to watch it. It's the same you, same thing. You imagine working. the breaking of his heart. Oh, my goodness. It would be out. Oh. Would, yeah. So he ran his clothes, put sackcloth upon his loins, and mourned for son many days. And they, he refused to be comforted, the Bible said. And um, uh, he was he basically um, had just given up to that point. He had lost something at that particular moment in his spirit and heart. So, um, so then we go to, well, here's Joseph. Now we switch back over to mm -hmm. where Joseph is at this time. And so now he's working in a Potiphar's house. A lot of time in between there, too. Right. So Genesis 39, 7 through 19. Let's skip over to that. We don't have much more. Just kind of hang with us, if you don't mind, just a little bit longer. Yeah, and if you can't, hang on. You can always come back and, and um, complete it then if you need to. So true. Uh, so true. All right. So here, uh, Joseph, verse 7, says, It came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. He trusted uh, Joseph very much. Potiphar trusted Joseph. And Joseph was an upright man. Right. And here he was being tempted. You're going to reach, you're going to have temptations. The Bible tells us that. The Lord tells us to pray, Lord, deliver me, deliver us from evil and from temptation. He tells us to tell, you know, to say that before the Lord. Lead us not into temptation. Right. Lead us not into temptation. <coughs> and so it goes on to where he ends up um, getting uh, accused of this because she takes his coat. She's hollering that he did something. And so now they throw Joseph into prison. Okay. Another lie. Another lie. And so he's in prison and he's sitting there, Genesis 29, uh, I mean 39, 20 through 23. And it says, and Joseph took, master took him and put him into prison, place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Another favor. He did not give up. <coughs> he stayed. I, I, I don't know how he did it. Um, but he had faith in what God's promise right. was. Right. Greater faith than in the lies, his circumstances. He had greater faith in the promise than anything that was going on in his life. Wow. Absolutely. And it don't matter what circumstance you're in. God, God can show his favor upon your life. Right. And you can ask him for that. Lord, you show, show your favor yeah. in my life. Let me walk in your favor. If that man did it without the spirit of God living within him, how much greater it is for us to be able to live right. with that faith, knowing that he actually lives inside of us. Exactly. And our promise is someday he's coming back for his church full of faith. That's what it says. I know, I'm jumping again, sorry. That's good. I, I'm just getting excited for the second coming of God. I'm, I want to be ready for it. Amen. Amen. All right, I like what verse 23 says, chapter 39. Okay. And the keeper the of the Genesis prison. Genesis still, right? Yeah, still in okay. Genesis. 
The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. So there you can have the favor of God again, which is, which is so awesome. All right, so Genesis 41, we're skipping over to where Pharaoh has the stream. Um, again, there's a whole lot in between there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He has this dream, and before that, I'm trying to make. Before that, there were two men. There was a chief baker, Potter. I mean, um, the butler. The butler and the baker. And the baker. Okay, was sent to prison. Okay, and so they each had a dream. I'm gonna let you read about it just for sake yeah. of time. And uh, the Lord gave Joseph the interpretation right. of these dreams. Now, everything God does has a purpose. And he was doing this so that when one of them ended up losing his life and the butler was the one that was being restored. And he says, when you get restored back to Pharaoh, remember me. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how much time actually had passed by. Yeah. But here, Pharaoh has now had a dream given to him by God. And nobody knew how to answer it. All of his people in this kingdom. All his all wise the ones, men. All his wise I mean, men. Yes. His advisors. Yes. I mean, he was pretty frustrated with them. They couldn't interpret it. And so the Lord prompted on the uh, butler's mind, oh, I know a man that can interpret dreams and what he says actually comes to pass. So he told Pharaoh about Joseph. And so they sent for Joseph. And if you read in chapter 41, Joseph, God gave Joseph the interpretation right. of the dream. And he said it was gonna be seven good years and then seven years of famine. And so for Pharaoh to, to prepare for that. And Pharaoh, because Jacob could not could, could interpret the dream, he made him second in yeah. command to take care of this. Second under, un, under him. Right. So he was first command in the field that he put him in. Yes. But only second to Pharaoh. Nobody was over him but Pharaoh. No. Right. So think about that. So all this I've been all saying think about that process. quite a bit tonight, haven't I? All of this process had been preparing Joseph for this moment and this place in leadership. Yeah. You have no idea where God's going to take you no. and what he's going to do in your life. Trust his plan. Trust his hand yeah. to get you prepared and ready for what the Lord is going to do in you ultimately. Right. No matter what it brings, it's all to work a greater good in us. One of my favorite things I like to say and the Rock Church, you know this, but there's some folks that are going to be watching not from the Rock Church, is that, and what we're trying to do is help with understanding and, and give um, knowledge, right. because the Bible tells us we're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yes. We're not destroyed for, from sin. Um, the, the addictions and the perversion and all that, it, has, it, it cannot destroy you, but it can, you can be destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because if you don't have understanding about what these right. situations are, then you'll fall into those type of temptations. And so we we go and we see men of God, great men of God, men that we say we want to be like. Right. Well, we really are like a lot, lot like them because they have fallen into temptations. Some of them yielded to temptation, but some of them did not. And they stayed firm. So it gives us hope in both sides of the, um, the, the standing. Ones that, yes. that fail, there's grace. The ones that can stand and still stand, oh, God bless you. I wish I was that type of man, but I'm becoming that way because I'm understanding that I have more understanding and more knowledge than I had before. Hopefully that helps somebody. Yes, very good. I would say that make you think, but I've said that a lot of times. <laughs> That's good. If, you, if you're like I am, I probably counted how many times I said it. <laughs> so here, here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So here is good. Uh, so here's Joseph. He's now under Pharaoh. Uh, taking care of the seven years of plenty, storing it up, getting all that there, and then the seven years of famine, setting up a system to where he can give out to people where there'll be enough to last everyone for seven years. Now, where jo Joseph's brother lived, they were having famine. They were feeling the right. distresses of famine, and they had heard that there was coin corn, I'll get it spit out there, in Egypt, right? And so they sent 
Um, Isaac, I mean, Jacob, oh goodness, too many names. <laughs> Jacob sent his sons to go into Egypt to bring back supplies. Well, read through all of that. I don't have the same time to, to, deal, to tell you all of that, but um, they, uh, Joseph had set them up to see what, where their heart lied yeah. and if they had been, I believe, to test them and see if they had, if they had a, a, a heart of, a, yeah, forgiving heart and felt bad for the things that they had done. And um, so read through that. It's very good. But the part that we want to focus on is when Joseph forgives his brother. Right. And look That's at, where we can't have shame in yes. our life. Because yes. you're talking about a man that had shame. Yes. All the things that happened to him. He didn't allow, didn't allow shame to overrule him no. and not to forgive. Right. But he realized the shame that he had and he forgave them anyhow. Right. And that released him from the shame. Yes, right. And, and that's why it's very important for us to get healing. Absolutely, for that. Um, so let's look at uh, chapter 45, verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray ye. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. I bet that surprised them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they yeah. were not thinking that, I'm sure. There is no way. They thought by now that he was probably long well, gone. You, you sure changed. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourself that you. Now, listen to this. This is so important. That you sold me hither, for mm. God did send me before you to preserve wow. life. Wow. He had a revelation that God did all of that so that he could use um, Joseph in one of the most strategic times to in the save history his family. to save his family. Yes, mm. he sent me ahead, sent me before you, that's what he said, to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which thou there shall neither be care eat, neither shall be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither. Hmm. He had a revelation. God's hand is in my life and God's, God has got me. He's keeping me. No matter, no matter what people yeah. say, no matter what people do, God is with me and God's will will prevail. And I wonder if that revelation didn't come until just then. It might. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. He lived a life that seemed to be, you know, um, a wondering why. Good, yes, yeah. but wondering. Yeah. Had, you had to. Just human nature, right? And and he said, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Wow. And then he said, haste and go up to my father and say unto him, and Thus he saith thy son. He wasn't Joseph. bragging to his brothers. No. He was stating fact. Yes. This Look is what why God did. Mm -hmm. This is why you had to do what you did. Yes. And yes. this is what God did through that process. And wow. So, so what a what a testimony of life. Some of you, I know you've shared some things about your past to me and, and the, the hardships that, and, and truly some of them has been really hard. And I'm thinking, Lord, it's just amazing that they're standing in you. It's amazing that they're living for you. If you've not heard Angel's testimony, Angel, I know you won't mind me saying that, but she's, there's so much that God wow. has protected her from and Powerful. kept her from and watched her from, but yeah. she's been through some things. You've all had to go through some things. Yeah. And well, but, I think of my brother. Yeah. Right? And, but God had a plan. He brought him back into the fullness of the truth of God. Yes. But he had to go through those type of situations in his life. And then he looked back at God and God showed favor on him again. And what a testimony that's going to be. What a, uh, such a valuable uh, things that you have, you're bringing into the kingdom of God with the, the people that you'll help, the, yeah. the words that you'll have. You My know, sister Angel said, "Go ahead." Yeah. She's not ashamed of it. Right? She knows God's hands is on her. It's one thing to tell somebody, you know, I understand. It's another thing to tell them, "Oh, I understand." I've been there. You know, been there, I done understand. That, drove the bus. Yes, exactly. Um, and so I thank God that He takes those bad things in our lives and makes them uh, so worthwhile. It makes you Amen. so glad. Amen. I wouldn't want to be. It's made. Thank who you, we Jesus. are, right? Oh, Makes yeah. you who yeah. you are. So, yeah. so good. And then we know that jo Jacob and his family settle in Goshen. And then um, not long after that, within Exodus 1, we find out that the Isra Israelites are in bondage by Egypt. 
they over they sister became Cher so big. Just came on. Oh, hey, sister Cher, love, love you. you. <laughs> uh, uh, we we see that that was where um, they begin to grow and multiply so much that the Egyptians became fearful that yeah. they were going to overtake them, so they put put them into slavery. And it's something what we will allow our minds to succumb to. Right. Let me just lend on this note, and then you say, don't let the enemy put you into slavery. He brought you out of slavery. Don't let him put you back into that. You need to you need to draw that line in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, I do not plan to return. Burn no. the bridges, you know, and make sure that you are staying uh, with the Lord and never have to go back into slavery um, on the enemy side. So, Amen. And I appreciate you coming online, and I know the Rock Church family, um, this is what we're doing for our midweek service, and I appreciate all the ones that are um, coming on that are friends, and and um, some folks we don't know, and then I'm, I'm very thankful that you're uh, joining you. us. But we started this Bible study from Genesis to Revelations, and um, I'm very thankful again that you're walking this journey with us. We're, we're actually doing this together. Yeah. Uh, we're not know-it-alls. No. Uh, what we're trying to do is just bring in and understand more of this truth. When, if somebody tells you that they have all the truth, be re, uh, weary of them. Right. Because the Bible says after you receive the Holy Ghost, he will lead you into all truth. Yes. So we're still being led. now. The, the essentials of, of salvation and, and the biblical principles that we understand, the foundations of it, that will never change. All right. But the truths that we learn and the revelations that we get is actually we start to learn, really learn that we are a child of God and that we are able to walk in his presence like we have never thought we could. Yes. And I'm very thankful for it. Again, Rock Church, thank you for warring yes. today. And I know some of you are still warring. Some have been praying and warring why we've been doing this. And I'm very thankful. We're praying, covering over you all day. And um, I want to pray over us before we leave. And um, I feel the Spirit of God. I'm mm -hmm. praying that you will feel the Spirit of God wherever yes. you're at. If you're in your car, if you're at work, I know a few of our people, they, we have prayer. They actually have prayer on Zoom and they're at work and they're part of that, Sister Diane. There's a lot of people that even at her work will see what's going on. We end up praying for them. And um, God's doing some awesome, mighty things. Yes, he is. And I'm very thankful, Lord Jesus, for this Bible study. I'm thankful, Lord, for the Rock Church that stands for you, Lord. I thank you for the family. Lord, even the family ones I don't even know or see that are a part of the family of God. I'm very thankful for us, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your truth, the truth of the word of God, not of man's voice, not an organization, but the truth of the word of God will go within our hearts and let us have ears to hear. And Lord God, that we'll act on the truth of the word of God and not just be here, but doers of the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this in Jesus name be done in Jesus name. Amen. I love you. Thank you for being on here with us. Hey, Rita. Uh, hey, we Rita. love you all, Sister Rita, um, Leveda. We love you yes. so much. Yes. And um, we, love, we love you all. Yeah. So God bless you. Um, we'll get to reach in here in just a second. I'm not young yeah. anymore, so <laughs> be patient with me. Right. See, um, you. See you Sunday. See you Sunday. God bye. bless you. Bye-bye.